Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Raggio. I'm a senior fellow at Foundation for Defense of Democracies and editor of FDD's Long War Journal. And this is Generation Jihad, the podcast that covers all things in what used to be known as the global war on terror and what we call the long war. Today, I'm joined by Joe Trusman, my friend and colleague at Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's a contributor at the Long War Journal, where he uh, covers all issues related to Israel and the Palestinians. And he also is a research analyst at Foundation for Defense of Democracies. And of course, we are going to discuss the war in Israel. And again, this is indeed a war. Joe, welcome to Generation Jihad. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's uh, but second time in three days. And I think we're going to keep keep continuing this. This is certainly a, I can't, I don't have words for it. It is a, a massive event. This is a 9-11 type event for israel um we've had a lot of developments in the since we spoke uh saturday morning um we're talking right now at about uh, 1 30 eastern on monday we'll get this up and out quickly because things are developing fast and things change we've had a lot of developments uh the israelis are on the offensive now against or it's beginning it's offensive against hamas in and company and all the all the allied groups that invaded Israel and caused the carnage that we've seen. The last estimate I've seen is over 700 Israelis and, and foreigners dead, um, over 2,000 wounded, an unknown number that have been kidnapped and brought back into, into Gaza. Uh, we have Israel's defense minister announcing that water, electricity, and food uh, will no longer being uh, arrive into Gaza. Um, the Israelis are in clear indication that the Israelis are serious. And if I might add, you would be insane to provide material aid to your enemy in a time of war. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, said this is a war. Um, Joe, I'll I'll stop there. Let's get into it. We have uh, all, you know. Additionally, we have some rocket fire and some infiltrations coming in from the north. I don't think it's as severe as what we've seen happen in the south, but an indication that this that the um, the war may be expanding. Tell us what's happened since we've spoken last, Joe. Where to start? Right. Right. Yeah. This is tough. Um, where to begin? Uh, well, we'll just start with Gaza. So, <clears throat> rocket fire continues from Gaza. Uh, Palestinian armed groups led by Hamas uh, continue to fire rockets mostly at Israeli communities adjacent to the Gaza, adjacent to Gaza, uh, and uh, but also we've seen rockets fired towards Tel Aviv, uh, which is central Israel, and uh, all the way to Jerusalem. And uh, actually, just this morning, uh, rockets were fired at Jerusalem. So, uh, so that threat continues. There are also still. Uh, members of armed groups uh in the uh, uh in the kibbutzim or the uh, uh israeli communities in, in southern israel uh, I, I believe there are uh a few out there still uh that the idf for israeli security forces are searching for uh so it's that's still a, a fluid situation now Joe, on that on that uh, issue I, yeah. the idf claims that they have retaken control of all the communities along the border but what you're saying it doesn't seem to be correct or do they think they're stragglers what are we talking about here right see the problem is this the there were hundreds maybe even a thousand uh hamas and palestinian gunmen that came into that flowed into uh, southern israel okay so uh, trying to account for every single one of them is you know just like you know like finding a needle in a haystack so uh that's it's i, I from from what I've uh, seen and people I've spoken to, uh, I believe there's still terrorists out there that they have not been found. Uh, so but that's going to take time uh, to verify as far as uh, if, if there's still terrorists out there. But I think there, it's still an issue uh, right so now. So both can be true, the, that they could, the Israelis can be regained control of the communities, but exactly. there are stragglers out there still unaccounted for. It, it, yes, exactly. Okay. That's possible yes absolutely so uh but something we talked about a couple days ago i mentioned is the uh, other fronts uh that could join in this conflict or in this war actually and uh of course the most important being lebanon and uh in recent days including this morning we've seen some activity i was just just as we were starting here i just saw a report that uh 
two IDF soldiers uh, were killed uh, in a gunfight at the Lebanon border, uh, and several others were injured uh, when a uh, when infiltrators, uh, armed infiltrators, came through from southern Lebanon into northern Israel, and uh, a firefight ensued. The IDF said that the um, the armed men, at least some of them, were killed. Uh, Islamic Jihad. It's, uh, claimed responsibility for this, uh, you could call it infiltration into northern Israel. So it wasn't, it doesn't appear to be Hezbollah. All right. So, uh, but then again, it's southern Lebanon. So it, even if it wasn't members of Hezbollah, Hezbollah knew what was going on. This, I mean, yeah, nothing that's happened. a very important yeah. point. Jay. Nothing happens yeah. from Lebanon, from southern to Lebanon without Hezbollah's approval and very likely aiding and supporting them even if it's just getting them to the line of contact and um, ensuring them security to that line of contact. So yeah, absolutely. Something that's very important is that in the ensuing retaliation as well, uh, in the northern uh, northern Israel, uh, Hezbollah says that one of its members was killed uh, by an IDF airstrike. And this just, uh, this just came out a couple, uh, about an hour ago or so. So that's very important because this, forces Hezbollah to to retaliate to respond so uh I, I I expect a Hezbollah retaliation against Israel now how that uh that retaliation will come about I can't say there's from what I uh from what I've seen in past years it could be a strike or a, a rocket fire from Lebanon it could be mortar fire it could be an uh, a missile strike or an anti guided missile strike against uh, let's say uh, uh, um, an IDF Humvee uh, so uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to have to have to happen today right so um, so yeah so I expect a Hezbollah retaliation and on top of that uh, it's things are already simmering this could easily just bring about a, a second front. I mean, one can argue the second front's already started, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so that's the that's the concern here that I have that uh, Hezbollah is going to join in the in, in this war, and uh, some on top of that, the, the ground war that everyone is expecting in Gaza hasn't even begun. Right now, the, all the Israelis are doing is they're just pounding, pounding Hamas and uh, Islamic Jihad sites and other uh, uh, other sites belonging to armed groups in Gaza. Uh, it's it's been almost nonstop uh, for for 24 hours or more. So uh, things are, are pretty bad uh, right now. But uh, the ground war that everyone's expecting, like I was like I was saying, hasn't even begun. So one question on the strikes in Gaza: In the past, the Israeli military would warn people that uh, in a uh, say if they, uh, Hamas was running a, a command center in a hotel, we'll just use that as an example that they would warn people that the strike would happen is that happening now is the are, are they provide do you, are you aware of the israelis providing such warning um as they have in the past or have they taken the gloves off and just decided to strike targets without warning? right no that's a great question i've seen evidence that they are uh there's this uh, classic uh it's called uh it's called the roof knock method where they uh fire a a I guess you could say uh, an explosive payload, one that's a small, hits, strikes the roof of a, let's say, a house or a building. Uh, it doesn't destroy it, of course, but it's enough to let people know, hey, get out of here. Uh, so it, they do warn people, uh, or sometimes they they actually call residents of a building or an apartment uh, that is serve that serves as a, let's say, a, a Hamas operations center, which does happen, by the way. Uh, and um, they uh, they let tell them, hey, get out of here. So uh, I do see evidence of that. I don't. Th I wouldn't say the. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say the Israelis are indiscriminately bombing everything they can in Gaza. That's not happening. That's that's just. Um, it, it, that's definitely not not what's going on, at least from what I'm seeing. So uh, there there is communication there. So, uh, but it's it's getting intense there. Uh, a lot of airstrikes, and something I just wanted to note as well. Uh, last night, at least uh, uh, here in the United States, a, um, uh, it happened about oh, I'd say about yeah, about ten o'clock or so Eastern time. Uh, the Israelis uh, attacked a site, a a building in Rafah, which is located in southern Gaza, and killed a commander 
uh, uh, that belong to the popular resistance committees. And the popular resistance committees is a group uh, it, that works closely with Hamas and Islamic Jihad and other groups. Uh, if you looked at their flag, it's a or almost a carbon copy of, of Hezbollah, okay? It's uh, very interesting, but these, these are Palestinians. They receive uh, they receive funding and support from Iran, by the way, which is I think is important. So, uh, so the Israelis are going after, starting to go after these commanders, uh, these guys on the ground uh, leadership. Uh, but that's just the this is just the beginning, I, I believe. I think they they really want to uh, go after Hamas, for example, uh, Islamic Jihad, and as the days go by, and especially if there's a ground war, I think we'll start seeing more of these. Uh, targeted killings against uh, the leadership of these armed groups. Has there been any uh, significant uh, kills by the IDF against Hamas or any of their allied groups uh, that you've uh, detected at this point? Nothing that I've really observed other than you know, like the the uh, the soldiers, right? The ones that entered Israel, uh, things uh, th- that type. Yes, there were some uh, commanders uh, that have been killed, right? But nobody that's super important. Uh, I would say, I will say, the the Israelis uh, published uh, the IDF actually published a statement saying they were able to capture. The deputy commander of Hamas's naval force. Uh, so these are guys that basically go in rubber dinghies. Uh, I mean, essentially that's what it is, and uh, try to infiltrate Israel from the sea. Okay, and uh, uh, it appears, at least according to the Israelis, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, that they captured this uh, deputy commander. So that's a good. Uh, that, that, that's that's good news, of course. But uh, there are there are much bigger fish to fry out there. That's for sure. At least. I, uh, the way the Israelis see it. So, um, so again, it's very early. We're like in day three, four now of this. So, uh, and I think it's it's going to be a long haul here, unfortunately. Just considering the amount of destruction and death that has uh, been inflicted on the Israeli population. Yeah, they're really left without a choice here. I mean, uh, how does the Israeli state survive if they allow Hamas? Uh, to get away with this. I don't think the Israeli public would accept it. I don't think the Israeli military would accept um, any type of compromise short of defeat of Hamas. I think that's, that, this is, you know, I, I said this on day one, I don't think Hamas really understands what it's unleashed here. They've they've given the Israelis no no other option than to go in and destroy them. Now, um, Maybe maybe they think that the Israelis are going to, you know, play by the old rules and and extract enough pounds of flesh that uh, that they can end these operations. But, uh, you know, I I think this is a game changer. What We witnessed the number of casualties, the the extent of Hamas's operations inside of Israel, the captives that have been taken. Um, and on that note, um, there's an interesting statement from a, a Hamas spokesman. Joe, tell us a little bit more about that. This is related to the hostages. Yeah, exactly. This is very important. So I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. So uh, there's Hamas has several uh, spokesmen. Uh, this particular one is, I guess you can say, it's uh, their their main spokesman. He's been around for a while now. His name is uh, Abu Obaida. And Abu Obaida, he published a statement, or actually it was a communique, or and a uh, and a I guess a video you can call it, uh, you know, making the usual statements of you know pro resistance and how you know th- all the great things that Hamas was able to do. Uh, however, the important part was that he threatened that he, uh, Hamas would execute hostages if the israelis did not stop bombing uh the safe people he called it i think he was referring to the civilians um however uh israelis are they're targeting the uh, hamas members are targeting militants they're talking targeting militant sites so but anyway uh that's the thing that he uh and on top of that he said they it would be recorded with audio and video and published so uh, Hamas either is feeling the heat here, right, uh, or or just making uh, empty threats. Uh, what's important here is that the hostages, there are all 
they're from different backgrounds, right? There, there's there's Israeli hostages. There are American hostages as well, uh, at least according to reports. Um, yeah, and, and others. So uh, I think I, I, I don't, I can't imagine Hamas really going through this. At least killing American hostages. Maybe they, maybe they will. But I think it's like a, a self-defeating uh, act, right? So, uh, and it's, uh, but they, they threatened to do it. So, are they going to do it? I don't know. I can't say for sure. Uh, but I, I can tell that they're, they're, they're feeling the heat as far as uh, Israel's re- response so far. Right. And these are just the the airstrikes. This isn't like the, the ground war everyone is expecting. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see what actually happens. But uh, they've, they've threatened this so far. So uh, time will tell. Yeah, the Hamas, you know, if it goes all Islamic State, if it actually carries through with this threat and goes, you know, Islamic State and publishes videos of executing civilians. I, you know, look, I, I think I saw you, news that the uh, European Union has suspended aid to Hamas and to the, to, you know, that's just for starters. If they go down this path, if they go down, you know, full barbarian path, I, I, it's going to be difficult to see where they're going to be able to garner support from. I, I'm personally, uh, do we, Joe, do you have any, any, understanding of the number of american hot killed hot and hostages that are out there i've heard i heard this morning i believe it was a uh, national security official from i think it was from israel who had said that the nine americans have been killed so far but we haven't gotten any update on a number of americans um who might be held captive do you have any information on that or you just as in the dark as the rest of us yeah listen yeah I, I pretty much in the dark as the rest of everyone because Listen, you know, these so many people were were uh, were abducted, right? And the Israelis have to account for every single one of these people. Are they alive? Are they dead? Are they being, you know, held hostage somewhere, perhaps that they don't know about uh, inside Israeli territory? By the way, uh, we just they just don't know. So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you for sure, uh, unfortunately. But this is definitely it. Definitely uh adds uh another wrinkle to what the israelis can do or have to do to uh ensure that these these hostages are taken back home safely right and that's the tough part i i don't know what will happen with them i think that as far as the israelis are concerned they will do everything they can to rescue these hostages, okay? Uh, but at the same time, they're just going to keep pushing through. You know, they're going to push through with their objectives. Uh, I mean, listen, just I'll give you an example. So uh, an Israeli soldier was his name Gilad Shalit. He was kidnapped by several armed groups and held by Hamas. This was some years ago. And uh, the Israelis and Hamas uh, were able to negotiate a swap. Okay, so a uh, prisoner swap, basically. So for Gilad Shalit, uh, one guy, one soldier, uh, they uh, had to give up, the Israelis, had to transfer over a 1,000 a thousand, uh, prisoners, 1,000 Palestinian prisoners, a lot of them with blood on their hands, uh, to, to Gaza. They had to, uh, just to get this one guy. So can you imagine 100 hostages, right, for, uh, they would, it's it's just uh, I think it's unthinkable for the Israelis to be able to to do that. So, but I don't rule out some sort of swap, right? Maybe like women that have been uh, captured by Hamas for women that are in Israeli prisons, or uh, children and women uh, that are captured by Hamas for uh, for women in the uh, in Israeli prison. So I do expect some sort of swap. It wouldn't surprise me, but uh, definitely not the uh, the Palestinian prisoners with blood on their hands, meaning Palestinian prisoners that have uh, carried out terrorist attacks against Israelis. I, I, I don't think the uh, Israeli government uh, would do that. Uh, so, but we'll see. But there are a lot of hostages. I think about a hundred, maybe even more, uh, are in are in Gaza. Several groups, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, popular resistance committees, uh, have already published statements saying that they have captives. Okay, uh, not only Israeli citizens but IDF soldiers as well. So uh, it's uh, it's a very very complicated situation. 
yeah, it's difficult to see the the Israeli public um, standing for a prisoners a one to one thousand prisoner swap in this instance as well. Too, I mean, there's a this is what really you know I I, I get we're talking you know at a higher level here, but the, the thinking amongst the Israeli public, which and you know having been having been there and, and spoken to Israelis, it's, it varies. It's it, everyone thinks that the israelis all think the same and it is a wide range of uh, of opinions on these issues but i think when you witness what you witnessed uh, over the last uh, uh three days that that hardens the heart and um it hardens opinions and it tends to um get people thinking along the same lines and and i have a very difficult time thinking that the israeli public would accept any type of prisoner swap beyond the beyond a one for one, definitely not with someone with blood on their hands. Um, you know, I do think the Israeli government would be and the military would be making a mistake to shape its operations based on ho- hostages. It has to do with it. the number one priority for the Israeli government ha- has to be the defeat of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and all of the groups that were involved in this. Um, well, anyway, uh, I won't pine on that any, anymore. I will say one more thing. If there is American hostages, the U.S. has options. And I'm really shocked that we haven't had an ultimatum is- issued by this administration at this point. The United States has capacity. Um, look, if you know, it'll never happen. But if I was president of the United States, I'd be making my demand for the release and it would be unconditional. And, you know, the fact that this has, hasn't happened is uh you know if i was an american citizen in captivity right now held by a terrorist organization in hamas that we provided hundreds of millions of dollars to um you know the american public if they actually understood this they should be outraged Uh, absolutely absolutely and i I do want to add something else i think right now i think that there's the thinking of hamas right so in previous conflicts because there's been quite a few uh hamas has they've taken the brunt they've taken the uh, uh you know they've gotten hit hard they've lost commanders they've lost uh, all sorts of military infrastructure and so on and so on so on and so forth in with i i'm not sure they even thought that they would be this successful right at, at this in, in this uh this operation that they launched and now i it I would expect that Hamas is thinking, okay, you know what? We're just going to sit back. We're just going to bear all this, you know, these airstrikes and probably a ground war and just wait it out. Because in previous conflicts, the international uh, uh, pressure from the international community has played a major role in stopping the Israeli military from uh, continuing its operations and destroying Hamas. Okay, uh, and we can the 2014 war would be a good example. Uh, 2021 as well. So um, I think what Hamas thinking is is thinking here is that okay, we're just going to wait this out. We're going to let the uh, let the international community see all the destruction that's happening on Gaza that we actually brought upon ourselves, not Israel. OK, and then uh, and then hope that that will uh, that will end the conflict. Right. Because uh, because, yeah, I don't think anything else will. I don't think the Israelis will stop until they succeed in destroying Hamas. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if they uh, if the if international pressure on them will be uh will will stop will stop israel from let's say completing its all its objectives right because this has just been so horrific this is unlike anything that's happened before i mean this is worse than yom kippur war as far as body counts i i mean this is on i was just looking right before we started and uh, this is of course this is local media it may be uh the, the numbers may uh be a little inaccurate, but uh, local media, Israeli media, uh, said that 900, 900 Israelis have been killed so far. That's unbelievable, unbelievable for Israel. So, uh, so yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think any international pressure really yeah. will stop Israel from just destroying Hamas. I and mean, look at the reserves. Like, there's, I think it was a hundred thousand reservists called up. I They're serious. 300, 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. So thank you. Uh, so they they mean serious business here. So, uh, 
yeah uh but that's the one thing i think that can stop everything that can possibly just uh stop the israelis is international pressure but things have were, are so bad that it, i don't think they'll listen i think they'll just keep going keep going yeah, and, and israel the the government has to be concerned about internal pressure and internal pressure within a country will always trump international pressure this is where i really think i think you're right i think the um hamas and company achieved catastrophic success i i don't I, I find it hard to believe that they've i mean maybe they felt it would be this successful maybe maybe they believe that but it's happened and now they're gonna have to deal with those consequences i you know look i'm of the belief that the israeli public cannot can no longer tolerate this that they will they will be the ones forcing the government to, to possibly to take a hard even a hard line harder line than the government itself wants to take on this so um yeah this is this certainly remains to be seen now joe uh, let's move on there was a press report it was at the wall street journal um notes that iran and hezbollah helped hamas and and the various groups the hamas back groups um plot this attack and gave them the green light to do so um I don't think this would be any shock uh, to you or I, and probably to those who listen to Long War Journal. I think one of the things that was, you know, you, you know, look, us saying this on Saturday certainly doesn't make us look smart. Uh, we're just stating the obvious. When you look at an operation of this complexity, um, you look at how it was coordinated, you look at the operational security that Hamas and company achieved, you really have to you have to start looking outward. You, 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 this is where you start seeing the hand of Iran, the hand of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps and its Quds Force. Um, so were you shocked by when you read this report? Uh, I guess, was it uh, last night or this morning? Um, or was this just, just a, a sort of yeah. a shoulder shrugger for you? All right. Um, no, definitely not shocked. Um, you know, we've been, uh, we've been talking about this at Long War Journal at, at FDD for for a long time about Iran's role, especially with uh, Palestinian armed groups and other groups in the region. I and I talked about this in the last uh, podcast. Uh, we published a visual on 19 uh, uh, armed groups backed by Iran on Israel's borders. This was published in we published published this visual in July. You could uh, you can look it up at uh, Long War Journal or at, on the F, uh, FDD website. Uh, however, yeah, it, it's. Uh, there's uh, it's not surprising of course iran was involved uh, and the the thing is you know if if it was just hamas that that did it maybe maybe that okay maybe they were able to pull this off by themselves but uh, come on there are and i've said it already about 12 armed groups involved all of them affiliated with each, uh, with one another affiliated with uh the, rather have that have received support funding uh, uh and arms from iran i mean come on it's of course it's iran of course iran is involved and the wall street journal yes uh it uh it, it asserted that, right? That what we thought this whole time that there's there's definitely a correlation here. I mean, I do have some questions about the report. Get me wrong. Uh, for instance, I think it said that uh, they had been training since August uh, to do this. But something like this, if you're going to involve all these other groups, I'm sorry, but this is going to take much longer than I imagine. This has been planned for years, and. Uh, so yeah, so there's questions like that that I have, but but the main message though is that Iran directed this, Iran approved this, green lighted this. Absolutely, I have no doubt about it. Just uh, and Hezbollah getting involved now as well. Uh, this is all related. This is all related. So um, so yeah, it, I mean, one can argue why they did this. Okay, that's fine. But um, so yeah, again. Not surprised about the report at all, uh, and uh, but I do expect. Unfortunately, I expect that other fronts again, like I said before, other fronts will be involved. Possibly Syria. Some of the Iraqi groups backed by Iran are threatening. Yeah, they've threatened before in previous conflicts. But I think what uh, 
this has been such a huge success for the so-called Mukawama or for the so-called Islamic resistance that uh, it may uh, encourage them to actually do something. But I don't think they'll act against Israel unless they get the green light from Iran, of course. So, uh, but regardless, uh, I am I am concerned. I'm concerned about other fronts, uh, especially if uh, you know. If a ground war ensues, or or which is very interesting, or if the United States somehow gets involved uh, militarily, I don't know if they will. I, I I think they'll let the Israelis get into do it themselves, right? Uh, but I think if other actors get involved, like Hezbollah or even Iran, let's say. Uh, I can see the Americans possibly getting involved, right? So uh, it, it's it's tough to say. There's just I mean, this is something like we have never seen before. So it's tough to forecast, right? Uh, oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. So uh, there are a lot of scenarios, but uh, I'll tell you uh, one thing. I'm I know um, I'm confident of is that none of the scenarios are good. No, uh, this, not. And, this is know, from, from the Israeli perspective. They should be wanting, you know, look, they have to recognize Iran's involvement and Hezbollah's involvement, and they're going to have to deal with those threats at some point. But they're going to want it. It's in their interest to, for uh, marshalling their resources and executing an operation, particularly a bloody one that's going to if they go on the ground in Gaza, which both you and I are certain is going to happen. Um, the Israelis have done it for less, um, far, far less than what we witnessed this weekend. But the Israelis would be wise to to single thread these um their response deal with gaza then turn deal with the threat in the north then deal with the the iranian threat they just they don't have the resources they're not a this isn't the united states it's a country of how many million people joe in israel we're talking you know a country under 10 million people yeah, yeah. um you know sure it has a robust defense industry but it doesn't have a you know it doesn't have the defense industry of let's say you know germany or you let alone the united states and so right. they have to deal with these threats um in sequences uh opposed to all at once which by the way if you know hezbollah doesn't weigh in on them, they would obviously be the biggest actors and then uh, also attacks from syria perhaps from the iraqi militias and other groups based there you know if they don't weigh in you know did iran did hezbollah just hang hamas out here to dry um, that's that would be interesting. I think you know Iran certainly and Hezbollah they certainly have their problems with not committing. Sure, they can sit back and watch Israel, you know, from their perspective, consume itself in the fight in Gaza. But if they made promises to Hamas that they would come to their aid and then don't, that's a that's something that will will be known within the Islamic resistance community and will hurt them. So I, I that, that's it's a reason why I do at some point expect Hezbollah to weigh in on this. I don't know when, I don't know how greatly, but and certainly more than what we've just seen over the last 24 hours coming out of northern Lebanon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh I mean they're going to respond if they haven't already. Actually, I just saw a note uh come uh come through my uh screen here that there were some launches identified from Lebanon uh just a few moments ago. So some rocket launches. So uh it that may be a response to the killing of a Hezbollah member. It may be something else. Uh but I just wanted to add as well, speaking of Lebanon, uh that it's just not Hezbollah sitting there in Lebanon. Of course, you know, we kind of talked about it before, but it's Islam Jihad, it's Hamas, it's the PFLP, it's the DFLP, there's PFLP G C as well. These are all these Palestinian, these are Palestinian armed groups and they all uh, work with each other. So I think they've I think uh you know they've been working they've been trying to establish themselves there for a long time as far as uh, militarily yeah they've been there in that in that region for some time now but at least militarily to a uh to launch attacks from southern Lebanon uh, under the auspices of Hezbollah. I think this is something they've been working hard on, especially Hamas and Islamic Jihad for the last several years. So I, I expect a lot more coming from southern Lebanon uh, in the coming days, perhaps weeks, uh, as um, as this war intensifies, uh, unfortunately. So we just, the big, the big X factor is just, is Hezbollah really going to get itself involved? Uh, because if it does, uh, then, then everything changes. I couldn't agree more, Joe. Joe, anything else to add before we wrap this up? For now, no. Maybe in a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, give me an hour, and I'll we'll let you know. <laughs> right. No. Uh, but that's uh, that's all for now. I think I, these are the most important points. But yeah, tomorrow and the next day is just going to be a new day. Uh, 
unfortunately, I just think, expect right now things to just get progressively worse uh, in Gaza and uh, possibly on other fronts as well, especially Lebanon. Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, get as much sleep as you can. I know it won't be much. Get a good meal or two in once in a while and uh, and cozy up with your family when you get a minute. I know those minutes are going to be real short for the next couple of weeks, possibly months, but take advantage of it when you can. I've been there done that and it, it's a tough uh, you know look we're not we're not in israel we're not on the front lines we're not taking rockets but um you know this can be a very stressful job when you, you're trying to stay on top of this and everything's coming at you hard and fast so just uh, take care of yourself there joe hey i appreciate it, bill thanks for having me on and i look forward to being on again absolutely joe thanks for joining us again um we'll we'll be talking i am certain very soon thanks everyone for listening to today's episode of generation jihad a reminder, you can find us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.